To another review and this is going to be for love and marriage huntsville episode 28 houston here comes the problem so guys we pick back up with stormy and courtney and tisha and marceau at the pool room pool hall wherever they were and you know stormy got upset and she's getting ready to leave marceau is like he didn't know they were still upset with each other and he said that you know if they're still willing to learn each other to get along, you know, he's up for that because he noticed that Stormy's energy was different or he, he didn't know what was wrong or what, what happened for her to get upset. Um, Stormy said that really she was done talking about the stuff and that she had more important things to do. She wasn't going to keep wasting her time with them. And we're still going back this whole, back through this whole thing with Marceau talking about the bitch thing. But Stormy said she still had energy from when her and Tisha had the discussion. And Tisha was unaware of that. She was like, she thought they were good. <clears throat> but Stormy said, you know, she didn't like the fact how she had to keep trying to explain to Tisha how she should apologize <clears throat> for the website issue. So like I said, she said she doesn't have time for the foolishness. She leaves. Next, we see Kimmy and Maurice. Kimmy is using this little baby voice I hate she does when she wants to get Maurice to do something but she's telling him that she's invited a sex therapist to come over to try to help get them back on point with their sex life of course Maurice doesn't agree with it at first because like I said before he tells us over and over he feels like it's and it's a mental thing it's not anything that she can't control herself if she wants to do it the sex therapist comes she decides to split both of them up and talk to them individually before she puts them together. Uh, Kimmy says that Maurice is used to having sex like two to three times a day versus where her original level was, was at least two to three times a week. And she finds out that her love language is actually seeing him do things or him fixing things around the house. That's what she saw him doing before as a single parent. And that turned her on. But now that they're married, he doesn't do those things anymore. You know, he said once before they could hire somebody to do the stuff and, and then or, or else she just has to keep asking him over and over until he finally does it. But that's a turn off for her. Maurice finds this out. It's like an aha moment for him. Like he said he didn't know that was attractive to her or that's what she liked about him. And he'll now start to do more of those things. So then they have this little activity that they have to do with each other to help also get them in the mood or help get them back to intimacy. And that's enough about their sex life. Next, we see Nell and Chris. And they have asked everybody to come to this Western thing restaurant. Everybody shows up except for uh, Big Lou and Tiffany. Anyway, so they let the group know that they're going to Houston. They want to go to Houston and try to bond and just have a little fun. Mel says she's all up for it. She didn't know Martell was going to be there, number one, she said. Because she just really doesn't even want to be around him anymore. But since he's there, she said she still stayed around because she wanted to hear what uh, the Fletchers had to say. And of course, the Fletchers, like I said, they, they are asking the group to go to Houston. Mel says she's okay with it as long as she can be on a different wing for Martell. And she has a lot to her door. She doesn't want him to have access to her. Uh, just from past trips they've had when they weren't on the best of terms or when they called it quits. You know, they had some 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 run in so she doesn't want that to happen she doesn't want him ruining her vibe and she's out here for the fun they notice the fletchers and kimmy notices that you know stormy and stormy and courtney's vibe is kind of off right because when tisha comes in tisha and marceau speaks to courtney and stormy and tisha even comes over she hugs stormy but Stormy doesn't acknowledge Tisha. She doesn't hug her back or say anything. And you know, Stormy, she doesn't like the fakeness. And that's what she said it was giving. It's giving fake. She knows we're not on good terms. So I ain't got time for that. I don't do that. You know, that's Stormy. She, ain't, she don't want to fake. She's not finna speak or anything. So Kimmy asks, you guys had a double date the other day. Uh, What happened? Are you okay now? Stormy says, no, nah, we ain't okay Tisha's like, yeah, I thought we were good. We're good. So anyway, Kimmy trying to be the save all. She goes talk to Stormy. And Nell is talking to Tisha and Mel. Tisha tells uh, Nell that, you know, like I said, she thought everything was okay. We met, but she brought up the website issue. She said, I guess my guy, I don't know if he had a template he used from when he did hers. 
But, you know, he used the template and Nell was like, Nell and Mel was like, yeah, we heard about that. So Tisha said she just, she feeling some kind of way because she don't appreciate Stormy going back telling everybody about that. That should have been discussed with everybody. But I don't even think it's a, a matter of her even telling everybody about it. It was out there. Everybody knew about it. The media knew about it. Like Stormy said, she was getting calls on it or people were making videos about it. So it was out there for people to know whether Stormy told Nell and Mel or not. I don't know why she felt some kind of way about it. And Kimmy just gave Stormy a talk, just talking about she needs to create her own oasis where she doesn't let people upset her or just letting certain things get to her. The talk really wasn't anything, but what I got out of it with both of them was just that they're going to just be cordial or whatever. And it's not a friendship going on right now with them. Mel also is talking to Marceau about Stormy and Courtney. And Marceau is like, just get over it. We need to just get over it. Or, you know, or else if we don't have to conversate, that's cool to us. Either way, he they want to roll. It's like, he said he doesn't have an issue with Stormy and Courtney. But if they want to have an issue, they don't have to argue about it. He said he's not beefing with anybody. So the guys split up from the women. And they're talking about how they're going to have a good time in Houston as long as they keep the women separated from them. Martel says he doesn't have a woman anyway. But he can have an import, meaning he can bring somebody in. Mel tells Nell, don't be pairing her up with anybody. She don't want to be paired up with Martell, you know, like they usually do. If y'all going to do something couple related, don't pair me up with him. I don't know what you got to do, but I don't want to be with Martell. And Nell's like, yeah, okay, we already discussed that. We're not going to do anything like that. We, we already know you don't want to be staying near him. And we know you don't want to be bothered with him. So we're not going to put you in that predicament. Next thing we see is everybody is in Houston. They're at this large rental house. Everybody's going to stay together. Nell and Chris arrive before everybody else to pick out their room. Next, we see Mel come in and Martell comes in after her. When Martell comes in, he speaks to Mel. Mel doesn't have two words for him. She, you know, she's like, she's doing something else. She kind of walked off because he came in like, hey, Mel, what's up? Hey, Mel. Mel never said a word. But when everybody else came, Mel acknowledged them and spoke to him. She is really over Martell. And it's, it's, it's a trip to see, like, because she really did try. She tried playing a nice way. That's to where they could co-parent. We can coexist with each other. It's all for the good of the kids. But now Mel is just done with Martell. She's over it. She knows how he is. If she's nice to him, he'll come back. And, and do something crazy if he's not already doing something. So like I said, everybody's there except for Tiff and Big Lou. Nell said that she asked them to come, but Lou said they were having some family issues. We found out later from Tisha that she talked to Tiffany and she's still dealing with this postpartum thing. So she's not at her best mentally these days. So that's why they weren't there. Next we see Kimmy and Maurice and she's telling him that they're going to do their little exercises while they're on this little trip they're on. And she says, and also we need to talk about how you went on a whole tour of doing interviews with people talking about our sex life and just knowing I got over cancer. It was just hella disrespectful. And I had to deal with the aftermath of dealing with my mom. And he's like, well, I apologize to you for it. He said, I shouldn't have been on, you know, shouldn't have done an interview on there laughing with Carlos King about stuff. And he wasn't aware that he said the disrespectful things he didn't think before he talked and he will apologize to her mom for it and so that was her biggest thing just dealing with family people with the stuff that he said trying to explain what he meant forget you know what everybody else heard in the world and just get things straight because her mom will be worried about her and, and i'll be like is that what you're dealing with at home and it is miss kimmy's mom is what she's dealing with at home that amongst i'm pretty sure some other things because she always have to correct Maurice. Like he doesn't think so he says before he speaks. And this is a constant with him. So Tisha and Marceau are in the bedroom talking. And she brings up, like I said, the about Tiffany and Lou and why they're not there. And next thing she does, she does this laugh. <laughs> she said, you know what I did? She said, I, you know, I had been sick, right? And she said, so I took a pregnancy test. And Marceau was like, I don't see why that's funny. And so Letitia cuts the laugh off. And she's saying, I'm just saying, you know, I thought I took a test because I had been sick and I didn't know why. And, you know, I could have been pregnant. She says, I, I know three people who got pregnant uh, and their husband had vasectomies. And he's like, Tisha's been to college. She's got these degrees. He's saying that should have been the last thing she thought was she was pregnant by her husband who's had a vasectomy. He's like, if, if you're pregnant, you know, the first thing I'm not going to think is in so many words, you're pregnant by me. You, you had to be out here doing something else to get pregnant. And Tisha's offended. She's like, that's disrespectful. And we're just going to stop this conversation because I'm getting pissed off. 
And he was like, well, I'm already pissed because, I mean, that wasn't a joking matter for you to do something like that and then not even tell me. And Tisha's like, well, now you're sounding like you don't trust me. And really, he's like, well, what am I supposed to think? I think he could think anything but that. Marceau knows Tisha is not messing around on him. He knows she's not. And if he thought she was, he wouldn't still be with her because his ego wouldn't let him be. And Tisha's like, well, if I have to take a pregnancy test, she said, I'm, I'll take that pregnancy test. But after I do, she said, I'm leaving your ass. And he's like, how you going to leave somebody who would have already been on the left view? He's saying, in other words, he'll be through with her before that even happens. So this kind of where it ended with them having this discussion or, or argument. I don't know much about vasectomies, but I do know of somebody that's gotten pregnant and had their tubes tied. But my thing is, she could have had the discussion with him first, and they could have went from there. And I can't even say my first thing would have been thought I was pregnant. But, guys, yeah, that's where this episode ended. So we'll pick back up next week to see with them what happens. And with Marceau still kind of trying to tell this lie, like he, you know, think she's cheating or that would have been his thought because I, I think that that shouldn't have been his thought like I said it, he could have thought anything but that with her doing that he could have it, it could have went a lot of ways but that's this week's review don't forget to like the video subscribe to my channel leave me some comments if you have anything you want to talk about and I will talk to you guys next time Bye bye